Hey everyone. So the other day I ran into a little bit of a dilemma. So I do a lot of different jobs. I don't have one real job. I do a lot of gig stuff. Uh, Uber Eats, DoorDash, uh, Amazon, I do computer work. Uh, so I'm kind of all over the place. And a lot of times this will take me to far out areas. Like I, I live in Portland and the other day I did some stuff in Salem. So in those kind of situations, I may not want to drive all the way back to Portland, you know, in the same night, especially if it's late. And maybe I want to stay at a friend's house or something like that. Or maybe if it's the end of the week, maybe I just want to drive over to the coast and stay there for a couple of days. Um, so I, I like to be prepared in those kind of situations, maybe have my laptop with me. But uh, my laptop I have, it's an RTX 3080, eight core, you know, Intel CPU. Honestly, I'd rather not have that in my car all the time. Um, and my other laptop I have, I have an old Lenovo Yoga 730. Um, it, it, it's aging. I used it for school about five years ago, and yeah, I just can't put up with it. So I was just looking around, seeing what was out there, and I stumbled across this uh, Lenovo Yoga, or not Yoga, but Lenovo um, IdeaPad uh, Gaming. It is a, you can see the specs right there is a Ryzen 5600H, uh, 256 gigs of storage, eight gigs of RAM, and an RTX 3050 Ti. Now, I had initially seen this, and I actually saw the one this year's model. Um, this is apparently last year's model that I got, um, but this year's model has an AMD 6600H in it, um, obviously a little bit better processor, um, and an RTX 3050, not a Ti. Um, I figured though, when it comes to gaming performance, um, the TI is gonna give you a bigger boost than if you're going from a 5600 to a 6600. So I, I went ahead, it was $599 on Best Buy's website. Um, I, it was actually in store at the same price. So I went in, picked it up, and I've been you know playing around with it for a few days and I honestly was shocked for the price. Um, there are a few things, obviously eight gigabytes of RAM, not really good. Um, and 256 gigabytes of storage is obviously not enough for today. So let's go ahead. I'm going to tear it up, tear it down, show you inside, and let you know what I think about it. For disassembly, you're going to have six longer screws right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's in the back and in the middle. And then you got four small screws. One, two, three, four. Once you've done that, you're just going to want to flip the device over. Now, I've already disassembled it, so it's a little bit easier for me. Um, before you do any of this, by the way, go into your BIOS and disable the option to turn on the device when you open your lid. Otherwise, this can be a pain. So once you've unscrewed all of that, you're going to want to just you know pop your tool in here and just run it along the edges. It'll pop off pretty easy. It's one of the easier ones I've ever worked with when it comes to that kind of stuff. So... Looking at the inside now, so for the most part, it's okay. There are a few crucial things I don't like about it though. So we have, let me get this back in frame. So first thing I noticed with this device is Here's your M.2 that comes installed. It's only 256 gigs, which is pretty small, so you're probably gonna wanna upgrade it. The problem is this is a 2240 size and it does not go out far enough. You can't like add a bigger one in here. So you're stuck with the 2240, which is, since it's smaller, it costs more money for more capacity. Um, otherwise, you can go to this side over here. You have another M.2 slot, um, but they did not include a standoff for this. So you have to buy those separately. Just be aware of that when you do buy it. And if you are, you know, you do think you're gonna expand in the future, I would go with the larger SSD or M.2 now um, instead of thinking, oh, I'll just upgrade this one over here later because this one will cost you more money. So um, with that being said, there is another option also. It comes with this little 2.5 bay. What you can do is simply put that there you know, you just mount your drive in there. And it also includes a little bag that has the plug-in for it. Now, I don't know if you can see in the video here, but there's a little ribbon cable plug-in right here that says HDD. So you simply just, you know, lift it up, slide that in, and then just plant it right there. And then you got, you know, a 2.5 if you really need it. 
Um, as far as RAM goes, it does only include one stick of eight gigabytes. So that's something you definitely want to upgrade, especially if you want to game on this thing because it makes a massive performance difference and I'll show you guys that later. Um, so you just simply pull that up and you got two slots, both labeled DDR. Um, I chose to opt just to buy another eight gig stick that had the same latency. It was only like 20 bucks, opposed to buying a full new set for 40 just to save a little money. Um, and it worked absolutely fine. So that is the inside of it. Let's go ahead and boot it up and let's you know, let you see the performance of this thing. So I went through and ran some gaming benchmarks. Uh, I started off with Cyberpunk. Um, now with eight gigabytes, it just could not handle much of anything without um, me enabling DLSS. So I kind of made that the standard for all the benchmarks on this. So starting out with just eight gigs of RAM, DLSS set to performance, and on medium settings, we hit about 48 frames per second on average. Moving up to 16 gigs of RAM, saw that improvement move up to about yeah, 80 frames a second. So it jumped up quite a bit higher, I'd say, for that. Uh, moving on then to ray tracing. Uh, once again, eight gigabytes of RAM. Yeah, we only hit about 18 frames a second. Um, and then when we moved up to um, 30, or sorry, 16 gigs of RAM, we then hit 35 frames per second. So I would not say this is a playable situation with this game. Um, if you dropped it to low, maybe, but then kind of what's the point in my opinion? Uh, moving on from that, I went to Final Fantasy XIV, since it's a fairly common MMO nowadays. Um, and with 8 gigs of RAM, it got a fairly high score, which is about the middle of the um, charts for their um, performance when they're measuring things. Um, now when I moved up to 16 gigs of RAM, we hit an extremely high, which is, you know, basically 15,000 plus. It's pretty much the highest you can get. Uh, and now on a personal note, I did just boot up the game. When I was running it with 8 gigs of RAM, I hit about 100 frames per second. And then when I was doing it with 16 gigs of RAM, I hit 170 frames per second. So you can see there's quite a bit of a difference when you're moving up from 8 to 16, and it's well worth it. Uh, moving on to Forza. Um, now, I do want to let everybody know here, I did kind of mess up. I did not turn off vertical sync, um, but this did have, uh, this monitor is a 120 hertz uh, display, so it shouldn't really matter as far as the frame rate. Um, we hit about a 59 uh, frames per second average with it at 8 gigs, uh, 8 gigabyte of RAM. And then when I moved it up to 16 gigabytes of RAM, we then hit 96 frames per second. So once again, quite a big difference there when we're jumping from eight gigs single channel to 16 gigs dual channel. So this is the webcam. It is a 720p webcam. Uh, not impressive at all, but I don't know what you'd expect from a webcam on a laptop. Honestly, I think they're kind of worthless. I wish the companies would just rather invest money into like a second stick of RAM or even a standoff for the SSD. So to wrap this up, there are a few more things I'd like to mention, just a few of the specs. So the RAM speed on this device is going to be 3200 megahertz with a cast latency of 22, which isn't bad in most laptops. If you go look for replacement RAM, 3200 is about the best you're going to get. You can get higher, but it's an insane amount of money. And this laptop in particular is not going to go above beyond, you know, above or beyond 3200. Um, for your SSD speed, I ran a few tests. I actually still have them sitting on the screen here running, but um, you can see it's about 2,500 um, megabytes for the read and about 1,200 for the write. Now, this isn't the best, um, but with this CPU, CPU, you are limited to Gen 3 speeds. Uh, I don't know why AMD decided to do this. It's a 5,000 series, which generally supports Gen 4, but the 5600H will only support uh, Gen 3. So you are limited on that. Um, the next thing is you got the monitor. It's nothing special. It's 120 hertz. Um, I couldn't find a lot of info on this, but it looks like it is a variable refresh. There's no HDR on it. Um, only 256 or 256, 250 nits uh, brightness on it. Um, the video card. Now this is. It, it, I've gone on about this before. When I was looking through my charts here, there are nine different laptop 3050 Ti's. And this one falls third from the top. It's an 80 watt variant. Um, it is limited to four gigabytes of RAM, but that didn't seem to hurt it that much because it, it ran very well for what it is. 
Um, it falls somewhere between a um, laptop 2060 and a 1660 Ti. Um, for your ports on the device, you got two USB uh, 3.2A ports and one USB-C 3.2. And then also you have uh, gigabit ethernet on the device. Um, besides that, that's pretty much everything. I was honestly pretty impressed with what it is. It's not a ton of money and I honestly would recommend it. Um, I'm not gonna do any like Ben tests like a lot of, you know, people will do will pick it up and try to you know stretch it side to side and all that I think it's pointless um, the keyboard itself is you know whatever um, I usually use just an external keyboard anyway but it does have the uh, num um, the num keys on the side here um, so if you do need that it, it's it's all right I guess um, other than that that's pretty much everything so Thanks for watching the review. If you like it, let me know if there's any questions you have. Also, let me know. I do usually respond to comments on my videos. So otherwise, thanks for watching and have a great Christmas.